Well, we know where we're going, but we don't know where we've been. And we know what we're knowing, but we can't say what we've seen. In the meanwhile, uh, Fort Wayne in the vicinity this evening will experience some beautiful weather. Clear skies, nice night for a walk, or look at the stars, or whatever. Going back to Indiana. Could be oh, it's cold, isn't it? Skate locker. Yes, it's chilly down here. It's air conditioned in the basement. I don't know why I shut all the vents, but over here is where all of the decks reside. What are some of these? These all got wet, unfortunately, but let's see if there's some that aren't super, aren't super wet. Oh, that's sad, isn't it? Look at that. Thrasher. It's gonna be a trip to pull that out. So here is a whole crate of skateboarder magazines. So if you lived in anywhere but a happening city, like if you didn't live in Los Angeles or, man, Los Angeles was it. So if you didn't live in Southern California and you wanted to be a part of everything that was going on in pool skating and ramp skating and all that, just kind of live for that to show up in your mailbox and then you could like be a part of that whole thing again and you'd learn what tricks were people doing and what was, you know, who was really hot and who won Skater of the Year and all that kind of stuff. So unfortunately mine got damp, but I'm hanging on to it anyway. My name's Tim DeSano, I'm 54 years old, and I've been skating for 39 years. toes skateboard in the trash in the bottom of a dorm and I pulled it out of the trash can and I took it I just figured somebody threw it away I was skateboarding on it and a student came up to me almost immediately and said hey that's my skateboard and I kind of uh, you know I'm like what do you mean I said I got it in the trash and he goes yeah my friend put it in the trash and he ended up giving it to me my dad always says that speed is your friend hesitation is the kiss of death it's really hard to think that you're gonna land it on the first try you're not. My son, see how fast he's going. <laughs> Hang on a second. Oh my goodness. No way. I'm not Slow down. <laughs> Slow <laughs> down. Slow <laughs> down. Slow 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 I had some friends that I skied with that started skateboarding and they were skating, ramp skating started to become popular. And so I got all excited about it. Then this place shows up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. They built this skate park that's like, got more press than anything in, in the world. And that's five hours away from me. So I started going to Cherry Hill probably, probably once a month to skate. And they had supposedly the best pool ever built, which was um, the Egg Bowl and it was 14 feet deep with three feet of vert, I think, and it was huge kidney-shaped pool. After that stuff, I kind of got more into skiing, kept skating for fun, and then a few years later, met my wife Dawn and then made the jump to Fort Wayne. This is Tim DeSanto, an up-and-coming professional alpine skier. Training for the sport in Indiana in the summertime is obviously impossible, 
so he's come up with a unique way to stay sharp without snow. He calls this the bowl. He built this a year ago, soundproofed it so it won't bother the neighbors, and trains up to an hour and a half a day on it. DeSanto is hoping that this type of training will make him competitive on a worldwide scale. But if it doesn't pay off and he falls short of his goal, at least he knows he gave it the best shot he could in his own backyard in the middle of summer in a homemade bowl. Jim Payne, New Center 33. But there was a lot of trouble downtown. There was a big altercation between police and kids skating in the fountain in Fryman Square when it was drained. And we had ramps in the fountain, like all winter long. <laughs> and we'd skate on there all winter, and like they, nobody cared. The cops didn't care. Like we'd have ramps, and we'd like air out of the pool, like out of the bricks and all that. My name's Dan Butler. I've been skating for 28 years, and I'm 40 years old. I guarantee he's gonna eat shit. I try something stupid and eat shit. I told you. I started skateboarding in 1986, seventh grade. I was staying after school because I got a detention. I was waiting for my mom to pick me up, and I see this kid that was a grade ahead of me riding a skateboard, you know, Mark Whitman, and he's trying wall rides. And I was just like, what the hell? How does he get up on the wall? I was floored, man. Floored, floored, floored. I got my mom to buy me some cheap, crappy skateboard or whatever. Mind you, I'm a country boy, man. I like, I didn't even have like a road that you could skate on. It was like a mile away, dude. Definitely would be Mark Whitman trying to do wall rides. Blew me away, man. He was so stoked on me being stoked on skateboarding that like, when I approached him about it, because he was one of the only dudes that skated in my school, that he just got a new setup and he gave me his whole old setup to get me rolling on something that wasn't like, you know, a Walmart skateboard or whatever from back then. You know? They started giving tickets everywhere downtown. Kids were taken downtown and that started the whole like, we all went into the city council meeting and said, you know, we need a place to skate and like pushing for a skate park. And eventually the parks department agreed and put the funding together to build Swing Skate Park. for them to hire someone, a guy named Tim Payne, who builds a ton of stuff now, has built stuff for X Games and all. And I talked to Tim Payne and kind of secured him for the city and said, if you use Tim Payne, you'll have a facility that you could hold the Nationals at and all this kind of stuff. If you don't use Tim Payne, you'll probably have some schlocky, lousy skate park that no one will come to. And so they agreed to use Tim Payne. He gave them a materials list and all kinds of stuff, and they had like semi loads of wood and all this stuff down there, and he never showed up. Like, they had a contract with him. I have no idea what happened, but Tim Payne bailed on the city of Fort Wayne. I don't remember the connection, but Dave, a guy named Dave Roberts, who's been a friend of mine for a long time, Dave Roberts stepped in. He was best friends with Jeff Kendall, and Jeff was one of the top first skaters in the country at that point from Indianapolis, and Dave came here and he built, he basically oversaw the building of Sweeney Skate Park. But he thrill, still throws the ball as hard as anyone. 
And in case you didn't know, the Sweeney Park Skateboard Center opens on Saturday. This should make lots of people happy. You see, skateboarders will get to enjoy one of, if not the best, facilities in the country. Plenty of downtown citizens will like the fact the skateboarders won't have to do their thing in the middle of the city. Now, if you get a chance, head out there to see some of the wildest stuff this side of the Pacific. One of the top boarders of Dave uh, Roberts, he also designed this new place, and uh, it's pretty wild. Listen to you got to figure out what kind of curve you're going to use. Uh, this is the biggest one anyone's ever used. Uh, it's 10 foot radius and a foot and a half of vertical. Uh, it's just a lot bigger ramp, a lot easier on you when you fall. Uh, the metal makes it a lot quicker, so they get a lot higher up on this ramp. I want to try this. So what's the advice for me? <laughs> uh, padding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. See, I took his advice, but you know, you all, y'all laugh. Look how quickly I picked up skateboarding. Oh, look! So when Sweeney came up and had an established park, like a real place that everybody could come, same time, ride, it was a big deal. I mean, actual ramps, you know, and especially with the the, the vert ramp, it was like the just, biggest one in the Midwest. I mean, it was, was the largest vert ramp in the Midwest at the time. Because yeah. I like, I remember like Jason Jesse and like Lance Mountain and those dudes like getting up there and being like. This is a big ramp. And these are the guys we're watching on TV, and now they're coming to see us, and they're going, this ramp you guys ride is crazy. Like the ramp we learned all, yeah. we just thought it was like, and then we didn't realize how gnarly it was, you know? Yeah, because that's just, we skated every day. Can you believe that? I can't, the that's incredible. Team. How you just do that little bit, and those other guys can go way up. No, that was me. It was not. <laughs> we're back after this. So. It, I'm so... My name is Matt Haynes, aka Doo Doo Brown, I'm 40 years old, skating 26 years. I started skateboarding. Uh, so embarrassing to admit, uh, Back to the Future just came out, and Marty McFly was sketching rides everywhere, and I was like, that's so much cooler than taking the bus. And it didn't really get real for me until uh, I saw these guys, and uh, and they were just, they had boards on the side and were ollieing over it. And I was like, that's just crazy. How did they get in that board like, up in the air like that? I set up a pool cue on the floor of my basement and tried to ollie over it, and I was like, this is insane. You can't do it. You can't do it. And then finally I got over to the little part, the skinny end. And then I was like, all right, I'm gonna go for the fat end of this pool cue. Got over the fat end. And that's what really hooked me to skateboarding. It showed me my mind. There's nothing that I can't do. And I would look at other obstacles in life the exact same way. Like, no, I can do that. Just watch. Yeah. Wow, this is beginning to look like a jumble of lines. Sucked the life out of me, man. Yeah. Totally sucked the life out of me. I was just like, I, I worked there for a whole year and only clocked in like two days. Of Two days a week. Because <laughs> we were trying to save money to keep it open for like the next year, man. We were like, dude, we could, you know, we'll take turns doing shifts and we won't even clock in for this. Because we know if we do this much, we'll have enough for a whole other year because that whole place was built off of donated money, man. Then a bunch of us tried to release it from the city. Do you any detail about like the mayor lying to us and all that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It ended mostly because people that ran it ran it poorly. Not Dave Roberts, but people that came after him, they'd hire people, I'd say, get a business kid who's a business degree who wants to do an internship who will run it like a business, and they would just hire kind of regular people. It wasn't the people's their hiring's fault, but city did a lousy job. There was a city council meeting, and a bunch of kids showed up, and I showed up. The city council meeting was downstairs in the city county building, and the mayor's office was in the same building upstairs. And I went to the mayor's office, Mayor Helmke was Paul Helmke, and the director of the Parks Department, I think Arnold was his last name. I said, promise me you won't close Sweeney Park without 
um, letting us know and giving us an opportunity to keep it going, to do what we need to to make it happen. And they said, we, you know, we won't do that. We definitely won't do that. And I had a friend in Pennsylvania who wanted to come here and run it. He was willing to come and work it and run it, and he could have done it. And they said, oh, we already are talking to someone. And basically, they lied. They never came back to me or anyone else before they closed it down to give us any opportunity to keep it going. So the park one day is just chained, and it's closed, and it's locked up. And we tried to get a hold of people, and no one would talk to us about it, and it dismantled, and they sold the steel. They had this amazing galvalume metal they had on the ramps. They sold that to a salvage yard and took everything away, and that was the end of the, end of the park. But I was also too young to realize what, what we had. At that age, I think the uh, railroad tie out front did me just as much as the park did, honestly. My name is Nick Weaver. I'm 36 years old. I've been skating for 28 years. First time I saw skateboarding, I was just sitting, you know, on the sidewalk, just bored, and these dudes started doing wall rides, and I was just like, "What's going on? Like, this is crazy. I want to do that. I want to do that." It was just rad. It, just, it hit me. My dad came to town, took me to Children's Palace, said you can get anything you want. I picked up a skateboard, and that's how it started. I don't trust this. We had, at the time, a lot to skate for the size of the town, but it still wasn't enough. But we utilized everything. There was stuff to skate. And back then, you know, you could skate flat ground, just do lines. Not skateboarding back then in the 90s, doing lines, skating the streets, just like that. I mean, the kids weren't as picky, you know. Fear what they don't understand. And back then, it was new. I mean, it, to Indiana, it was new. You move so fast, and it's such it's such an aggressive thing. Yeah, people just didn't get it. transition, I got a hold of a ramp and I put a ramp at my house. When I was looking to, to surface my ramps, I knew that the metal from the Sweeney Park ramps had been salvaged and sold to someone here. And so I started asking around to try to find out who had it. Like, hey man, I found the company that took Sweeney down. I know where the metal is and we're all like, <laughs> are you serious? We couldn't move because we thought it was gone, man. We went and got this metal that was, the, they were these four by 10 sheets of hulking metal that weighed a ton. And I was sure someone was get their hand cut off trying to carry it around and drop it. It was an undertaking. We got more rusty because of the way they stored it, you know? But we're like so stoked that they still had it. You know what I mean? <laughs> we put it on the ramp, and that ramp was here for 13 years.
slowly things started to amp up on the park scene. Park skate parks started being built around the country. Again, with the street skating amping up, slowly ramping back up, that created more tension in with the city administrators and kids downtown skating and causing problems. It's like a cycle, the same thing happening again. And that you know, started moving toward looking at putting us another skate park in town. There had been so much talk in between the gap of having parks, but like, oh, we're gonna have a park, we have a park. When they were talking about Lawton, I was like, whatever, dude. We heard that there was, in fact, a skate park being built in Fort Wayne. And so we went down there. The reason we went down, not only to see the skate park, but I had heard that Wally Holiday, who had also built Cherry Hill, had designed and built Cherry Hill Skate Park that I used to skate at as a teenager, that had uh, arguably the best pool ever built, was building Fort Wayne. So I actually took a photograph of me doing a board slide rock and roll in the Egg Bowl, a big black and white 8x10, took it to him and had him sign it. And he had plasters, like expert plasters that were there, he brought in from, from Southern California. and. They did an amazing job. I was blown away actually. Like I went down there like every week through the course of like the building process and was like click 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 click. Oh my god, look at that. I was just so stoked. Like, I remember the day the last night before they poured the flats in the big bowl, like me and Mike Emmerich went down there at like two in the morning and because we knew that was the last thing they were doing, so we went down there and we drank like a twelve pack of beer just talking about how amazing it was gonna be. We stuffed our beer cans like underneath the rebar and stuff, <laughs> you know, and the dudes that came in the next day, they poured the concrete right over the cans and didn't mess them with any of them at all, you know, so that's all like in the flat box still, and, like most people know that, you know. <laughs> They will now. Yeah, they know now, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. My name is Christian Long, I'm 17 years old and I've been skating for 11 years. My name is Chris Ashton, I'm 29 years old and I've been skating for 15 years. I was interested in it because my cousin skated a lot and well he just kind of always had like a board laying around his house. When I first started skating I mostly just skated like in my driveway. I never really went down to the park or anything. I was just like kind of scared of everyone. Just like in my driveway and like anywhere my friends were at. Christian turn around. Look at, look at the camera. I don't think I can. <laughs> I got into it because uh, I played Tony Hawk Pro Skater on my PlayStation and grinding was so, so fun in that game and I wanted to know what it felt like in real life. So I bought a skateboard. <laughs> That's terrible. It made sense because nothing else was going to get me outside. <laughs> I wasn't going to go do anything physical without skateboarding. I guess. I think that we have great spots. There's lots of different stuff to skate. That said, nothing's perfect. Like, you just need to think creatively. People need to think outside the box to have fun here. As far as street skating other places goes, like, you know, being on vacation in Southern California sure was fun. <laughs> uh, there's lots of stuff to skate there. Yeah, Los Angeles was a gift, so if you didn't live in Southern California, I moved to California in the end of 2011, and the skate scene here is just so different. It's crazy. Everything is different, really. My name is Rio DeSanto. I'm 21 years old, and I've been skating for 11 years. I started skating as a kid because my dad skated and I wanted to do what he was doing basically, just follow in his footsteps. My dad always says that speed is your friend, hesitation is the kiss of death. On my own, I just branched out and like really fell in love with the culture of it. And I just felt like skateboarding was something I should be a part of and it was too fun to not be a part of, ultimately. The thing about skateboarding in Los Angeles is that the spots here are perfect. There's skate parks everywhere. The weather is perfect. But it's not that skateboarding here is better than anywhere else. It's just different, mostly. Honestly, going back to Indiana and skating is something I really look forward to. Lawton is a big part of that. It's an amazing park, and that's not just because I grew up skating it. It's also just an amazing park. But even outside of Lawton, I really do think that the rawness of skateboarding is found in places like Fort Wayne, where it's just seems more pure. And padding and installation are no extra charge. Rap is what the producer is saying right <laughs> That's now. That's what he's saying, come on. <laughs> Thanks, Skateboarding's been good to me since they were, in different ways. You know, even in the worst times, it's still been good to me. And it's a very hard thing to understand what it means to a skater if you're not a skater, you can talk to somebody to your blue in the face and they're just not going to understand unless they experience and do it or roll away from a trick. From the second I rolled two feet on board, dude, I've been hooked, man. You know, it's like, 
28 years later, you know, it's like still like one of the four things I think about throughout the day all the time. You know? <laughs> I still skateboard. It's been 15 years and I still do it. I mean, I'm going to go do it after this is done, for sure. Oh, shit! Oh! As far as injuries, um, that's just part of the game. If you're going to do it, expect injuries. Oh, I broke my ankle! I just broke my fucking ankle! Fractured my shoulder, broke ribs, broke my right foot, which is still broken. A compound fracture in my left ankle, broke that five times. Broke my leg. The injuries were definitely worth all the good times. I would do it again, and I'm still doing it. And I know I'm going to get hurt again, but I know I'm also going to have good times. And it's like, like today for instance, you know, after my last injury three years ago, I think that three year break. Uh, pushing those limits and it's like a tingle, a tingly feeling you get. Now that sounds corny, but it's true, man. You know, it's just like a, it's a familiar feeling. So yeah, it's worth it. You know, something, once again, that you can't explain to somebody unless they ride a skate, you know? <laughs> Skateboarding is so rad in the city. There's so many just amazing skateboarders here, man. It blows me away. I just want to see them be able to skate year round. So, like, if maybe dudes will get to that point where, you know, if they want to go try to make something with skateboarding, at least they have the chance to, like, skate year round here. Seeing little kids walk in and, like, barely being able to go up the small quarter pipe one day, then you come in, like, three weeks later and they're dropping in on the biggest quarter pipe. Like, this stuff amazes me, dude. You know what I mean? Progression. Sick. That's a good reason why I did this. Well, we know where we're going, but we don't know where we've been. And we know what we're going, but we can't say what we've seen. I think it was yesterday, man. Crazy thing, that was almost 10 years ago. Oh, here's one. Mikey P. I've never seen anybody snap an ollie like him, I swear. This is Adam Kier. This is 93? No, that's 95. And the memories, do you know? How has skating changed for you now compared to when you first started? Get your quarter. What draws you to skateboarding so intensely that you're you just doing donuts? <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting to know Nick Weaver. I didn't really know Nick that well, but he was a part of the skate scene in Fort Wayne. At some point, a few years back, he said to me, do you remember when I asked for your autograph? <laughs> he was doing inverts. And I was blown away. And I was like, I thought he was a girl. And I asked him for his autograph. <laughs> and he was like, I don't know, I guess. Some old shitty photos. 
<laughs> As you can tell, I'm like a sentimental son of a bitch. Best Smith Grind in the business. I got a dreamy one. Butler. Butler. Shot lady. We're on a road to nowhere.